Welcome to Threads of Enlightenment, your journey into personal growth. The splendor of any decision is after you've made it, all that remains to be seen are its consequences. My name is Ken Primus. I am your host. Here at Threads of Enlightenment, we talk about the principles of self-development and personal growth by having conversation with people who have walked through their journey of personal growth. We believe that everyone at some point in their life will have to deal with one or more of these principles to have the privilege of focusing on their self-development as humans. These principles, when applied, can help you to become the best self possible. Welcome to another episode of Threads of Enlightenment. My name is Ken Primus. I am your host. We have been uh, going through the chapters in my book dealing with um, what I call the process of us uh, becoming healed from whatever situation uh, we've co- we found ourselves in and um, and how I call what I call growing into becoming a mature human spirit. Uh, we talked about the first chapter. We talked about self-love. It's so important um, to understand what that means and um, uh, the process of recognizing that. That is our starting point, um, that once we learn how to love ourselves, we can then truly love someone else. Um, because if you can forgive yourself, because uh, you and I both know that you are your harshest critic, And um, if you can turn around and forgive yourself, you can then forgive anyone uh, from that place. Uh, We talked about uh, solitude um, and uh, recognizing what that is and um, that it's not a place of weakness. And then we talked about unchecked emotions, which is um, uh, one of the things that uh, we have to recognize that our emotions bring us into certain states that cause us to become who we are we have we talk about forgiving one and uh forgiving uh, others meaning that uh, the person or the people that has caused the harm upon you in order to become success um, or healed you are going to have to forgive them at some point the other thing we talked about is um conquering your damaging habits which um is very important and I had meant we went over why I, I call it conquering, because it basically it, I believe you're in some uh, type of warfare when it comes to your personal growth and so forth. In this episode, we're going to focus on giving of yourself, and this is such a beautiful thing. It's it's a powerful um, uh, state to be in, um, and uh, uh, lots of place right now are looking for volunteers to help in all these different aspects of uh, our current situation in this world. Um, But it's even more than that. Um, Volunteering about something and giving you help to food banks or local community things that people need help, uh, that is good. But a sick person can also be doing that. But uh, what I'm talking about when I say giving of yourself, um, it's a deeper, um, a, a deeper thing, and we're gonna go into that once we uh, we're gonna take a little break, and we'll be right back, and we'll dig, dig a little deeper and uh, talk about the um, the process of giving of yourself. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Threads of Enlightenment, as mentioned earlier. I am Ken Primus. I am your host. Um, in, in my book, uh, the book that I wrote with Rade, um, I had uh, used quite a few uh, quotes and stuff from Jack Cronfield's book, and I keep telling you guys to purchase that little book. It's really, uh, I bought that book, and I use it to assist me in the development of my children's growth but I learned so much about it for me as an individual as well. 
uh, that I recommend um, you get it for yourself as well as those that are listening to me that have children. Um, but it is an excellent book for an adult as well. Um, one of his uh, uh, statement that he has in there, if you know the power of a generous heart, you will not let a single opportunity for giving pass you by. And that is such a powerful thing. Notice what he says. Um, uh, a generous heart. And so, once you begin to go through your process of healing, uh, certain changes begin to happen to you um, individually uh, as you begin to heal, as you begin to um, to uh, uh, grow from that person that was broken um, to someone that is much stronger. Um, someone that is able to now stand up and uh, smile and uh, know that you have gone through a process as you begin to heal and you're getting stronger um, every day. And so um, you have to gain and obtain that generous heart. And the generous heart is not just, uh, you know, and I, I, um, I know when you, you, there's a need out there. I just read an article this morning as well, uh, that several, um, uh, food banks are, are, are just needing, uh, volunteers to come to their aid because of the great need that is out there because of the COVID situation that we uh, find ourselves in and, uh, being out of work and, people needing uh, food through the food bank and so forth. And so um, those that have a servant heart uh, versus those that have a generous heart. A servant heart is one that uh, is going to serve uh, um, the needs of the people. The giving stuff, the generous heart, is of a little different material. Um, but it kind of piggyback um, on, on each other, and we'll go through uh, um, in that process of, uh, as we're going to talk about it and um, uh, learn about it. There's a saying that I say, uh, those who give of themselves are never selfless. And so... There's tremendous um, peace and strength and power that is in a generous heart and those that are also um, that are of a servant heart. And um, uh, I remember uh, my situation because when you are locked in prison from the pain and the hurt that... Uh, you have been have been inflicted upon you by whoever um, uh, that person or people are that has caused you to be in that um, as I mentioned earlier that prison that state where of darkness and pain and so from for you to be in that place to come to a place where you can have a generous heart. That means you have learned to forgive yourself. That means that you have learned to um, to to uh, not believe what someone says about you, their opinion. That means that uh, uh, you have walked through in a place of solitude and you have um, gone through whatever process to gain your strength that you may you could stand and look at yourself in a mirror and say to yourself, I love you, I love you. You are not perfect, but I love you. In that place where you have learned, you visited where you have learned to forgive that person that uh, are those people that have caused you to be in that darkness where you can look at them and say, you know, I don't have any grudges against you. Um, 
but I mean that from this place in deep in your heart um, where you have gone through that place and um, you have made the adjustment uh, to your attitudes uh, because uh, I mentioned in that study that you focus on your perspective because perspective is everything. You changed how you look at that um, situation that has caused you pain. You've been through um, that attitude adjustment. And so you've gone and you've changed and you've conquered those damaging habits that cause you to behave and, and spiral out of control over and over and over again. And so you are able to look at this after you've gone through all of that. You look in the mirror and you have gotten this heart. Your heart has changed. Your personality has changed. Your perspective has changed. Your ability to love has changed. Your ability to forgive has changed. Your ability to to accept has changed. Everything about you has changed. And so your heart, your inner person, has now begun to live from a place of gratitude, from a place uh, that is able to give of yourself because you are one of, uh, you now live from a place of thankfulness. You have experienced the pain. You've experienced all of those things. And so as you begin to become, uh, you begin to become alive, you begin to uh, taste life. You begin to, I used to walk around, um, and my friends and my, my family will tell you, uh, where we just uh, kiss, I used to kiss my hands in appreciation to how precious I, I, I am, how unique, uh, how I am one of a kind, how special I am. And from that mindset, you begin to become uh, uh, gracious, you become thankful. There's a joy that erupts inside of your spirit that gives you this energy that uh, causes you to want to reach out to someone and now uh, be generous to them uh, from a place coming from what I described earlier, where you are so excited um, and that you want to make sure that the person that you're talking to that is in pain, that you become gracious to them, that you speak words that is able to free them and build them up, that you can speak words that is able to encourage them, uh, that you can speak words that is able to, to begin to take this person and to give them a new perspective. And so um, you begin to come from a place of graciousness and uh, uh, that place is a place of beauty and power. Um, you begin to now infuse someone with your strength, someone else that is in a place of uh, darkness. You begin to infuse them with your, 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 your the, the power that you have gained from the place that you have been delivered from and that you've walked through. And so this becomes somewhat intoxicating um, because I remember when I'm, I was able to talk to other people about their situation and uh, began to give them advice of how and what happened to me and how I began to walk out of where I, I, I lived for years. And so um, this is a place that you and I uh, eventually come to, a place that you begin to give of yourself. And as I mentioned to you, you're giving from a place of a graciousness. Um, and uh, it is such a beautiful place to be. Um, as, I, as I'm talking about it, I remember some of those times and some of those people that I were able to talk to and help them to get um, to unlock unlock the door 
that uh, they were hiding behind uh, because of the pain that someone um, uh, gave to them. From when you begin to share from this gracious heart, um, it's so powerful because it's not you're sharing, as I mentioned, from a different perspective. You're actually remembering where you came from. And you can sympathize, you can empathize with this person. And they will feel it, the energy, the transfer of energy between you and them will be enormous. It will be freeing. It will be motivating to that person. Remember when someone presented to you and from that place uh, with a gracious heart came and began to tell you and help you in certain areas in your life. Remember that force, that energy that you felt uh, that uh, um, you participated with with that individual and when they left, how that was able to sustain you, um, to help you through those uh, um, uh, places that you need to, to, to do and, and give. We look at some of the people in history, Mother Teresa, who is one that would give um, of herself uh, in uh, places where people could never give her anything. And so that's the beauty of the ability to give. And so as you begin to give from that place of a gracious heart, you then walk into the arena where you become a true servant. Because as you come from this place of graciousness, and now when you begin to serve someone, you're not serving them out of pride. The Bible talks about when Jesus, um, when he walked into this temple, and how these religious people were giving their tithes, they were throwing it and walking pompously and with their heads up. And uh, there's this story about this woman, this old woman uh, comes, and uh, it talks about her giving a mite, a penny or whatever she had, and she came and she placed it in this um, in the offering thing. And Jesus looks to his disciples and he said, "That woman gave of herself. She gave actually everything she had." And the others, he said, "They will get their reward. They have already gotten their reward." But he looked and he said. The reward that they got was that people, you know, people saw them, that they're, they're this pompous walking around. He said, that's their reward. But he said, that woman, she said what she gave, it, that it triggered something and caused uh, God himself to look at her and begin to uh, uh, respond to that heart that she had. And so... um the graciousness takes us into this place of servitude. Um, the disciples, uh, Jesus washed the disciples' feet, a place of servant from a gracious heart. Um, so it leads us there to become true servants, but um, uh, it starts with giving of yourself this gracious heart, as Jack said, that uh, he mentioned earlier. And I wanted to really focus on that because that's the key to it. He says, if you know the power of a gracious heart, you will not let a single opportunity for giving pass you by. And that is from uh, Jack Consville's, uh Brutal Little Instruction book. And um, uh, I love that book. And uh, it has some great insights into it. But uh, what we'll do is take a little break, and I'll, we'll be right back, and we'll continue to talk about um, giving of yourself. And it's really important that you understand what I'm trying to say uh, from this gracious heart. And then when you become, it takes you into a place of a servant. You begin to serve with, with even a, a, an intensity, a love, a pureness, absolute power. And uh, uh, you're able to um, gain uh, so much strength from that place. 
but we'll talk about it on the other side. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Threads of Enlightenment. Uh, we've been talking about giving of yourself. You know the old adage that they say, it's more blessed to give than to receive the best things in life for free. You know those things that people just spout but really don't understand the principles behind that and the power that is behind that. Um, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so if you're giving of yourself, I mean, you've gone through a tremendous amount of, of, of healing. You've walked through places of weaknesses. Uh, you've walked through the uh, process of uh, looking at yourself less than. You've gone through the process of, um, of uh, being less selfish. Um, you've gone through the process of growing up, basically, as I say. And you've learned how to motivate yourself. You learn now how to speak to yourself, how to encourage yourself, how to learn. Uh, and so from this place uh, of giving to yourself, you have to learn how to practice, uh, how to become generous. Um, and uh, as you become generous, you, a place of a generous heart, it's, it, it's an art form. You, that you have to cultivate, and you have to cultivate this, um, I think, from a place of strength um, in the sense of overcoming all those things that you've gone through. Um, right now, you're, you know, you're not standing up, a, you know, let's say 150%, 100%, but you're standing up. And as you begin to do this, you will get stronger. Mark my words, you, you will get stronger. Because this generosity, as much as you think it's for them, the persons and the people that you're being generous about, it is more so about you. Because what begins to happen to you, you know, um, I used to say to people, you know, uh, give to the poor, the weak, the hungry, then watch. And uh, I used to say that to, to them, then watch. The focus not to watch what happened to the poor or the weak or the hungry. The watch was to focus on you because when you begin to watch, what begins to happen to you is this thing inside of you begins to get, uh, because they're, they're thankful of what you are bringing and offering them through your service, uh, through the generous heart that you have cultivated they are thankful for that. And so, um, uh, but what it does to you, it begins to encourage you. It begins to help you to look from just looking at you. Um, uh, it begins to, you begin to, 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 to have this connection that you had lost before, a deeper connection to yourself first. And then you are now able, you're stepping out to begin to connect to people. And the first people that you're looking at to connect with are people that can't offer you anything. And nothing, they, you, they, they can't give you anything back. Um, so you are here uh, offering uh, from your generosity and this giving and this servitude that you now talk, uh, work, walking in. Um, you're looking at the bigger picture to help you grow so that you will become strong. And, um, you know, giving to yourself uh, or giving to others, as they say, is basically giving to yourself. And so um, it means that you, when you begin to place the needs of others above yours and uh, you begin to see that... Um, uh, all, all of the self-centeredness that you had caused by the pain because you begin to retreat in looking at yourself, oh me, oh my, what's all that stuff. All those things, those thoughts and actions become smaller. Um, as you begin to, to, to give and be generous, you're going to practice this now and you're going to practice it daily where you're going to be, find, you're finding yourself, can't wait to 
to to do something from that place as as Jack had said earlier um, if you know about the power of a generous heart you will not let a single opportunity for giving pass you by if you you uh, trust me it's not going to happen uh, if you once uh, once you understand the, the the this principle because again as much as you think it is for them this is all about you um, so i encourage you to stand ready uh to be able to present yourself to others um to be one of a generous heart um to sacrifice from the place of your hurt to now reach out to someone um that needs your wisdom that needs your graciousness that needs your forgiveness that uh your understanding of forgiveness your understanding of the right attitude and perspective um uh, uh stand ready to be able to do that uh, look for the opportunities to be able to help and uh, to free that person from their uh, um, prison that they were in that you were in several weeks or months ago that you are now uh, learning to proceed from there and so as you learn to give to others um, trust me uh, this particular act is going to create a sense of joy in your heart um, a sense of connectedness with others a sense of uh, strength where you, you are no longer the victim you are no longer the one that uh, they have uh, uh, taken advantage of um, uh, you know you're going to learn how to wake up every single morning you know, believing that you know you there are people out there that uh, we call it divine appointments uh, that will come in your path that you will able to to see how uh, your words and um, your gracious heart um, uh, will help someone from uh, um, you know doing something in their life i'll give you an example i remember uh, one time when when um i was uh, i went to visit a friend of mine who was a bartender in a club and um, i was just sitting in a corner having a drink and just giving, talking with him and stuff like that and a friend of mine um i saw her coming in to the bar and she was hugging people as she came in and stuff like that and then she came to me and i remember looking her dead in the eye and said how are you and uh, she looked at me oh i'm fine you know the general stuff and i stopped her and i said no how are you doing and that second time when i spoke that to her, she began she sat down and she began to pour out all kinds of stuff about where she was what was happening with her i listened to her we talked we had a, a wonderful exchange of words for hours and at the very end of our conversation where we talked about her starting anew in certain things taking a a, a, a risk where she wouldn't have taken before you go this and that and you know it's just basically was able to encourage her and uh, to be gracious from my place um, and you know that warmth that joy she felt that at the end of our conversation she looked at me and she said Ken I'm so glad that um, you know we talked she said I was about to commit suicide and you were the last person that I was coming to hug before I did what I was planning on doing. And so as a result of our conversation, um, she changed her mind. And so uh, we have to be able to, you know, believe, wake up and believe that we are, we will have these divine appointments that will be placed before you and I and that our uh, responsibility 
is to respond from a place of graciousness, a place of gracious heart. Um, and I'm telling you, it's a different place from a servant. The gracious heart leads you into that servant place. But when you serve from a gracious place, it becomes even more powerful than just volunteering your time and all that stuff, which is awesome. But when you become a true servant as a result of living from a gracious life, it is more powerful. It is so impactful. It is able to take someone that is about to go commit suicide that evening and uh, change their lives forever. And uh, she married and all those things years later. But um, uh, you and I have to become um, uh, aware that as we come out of our situation, as we move from one space to another, that the end goal and the end result is for us to have a gracious heart is for us to now start reaching out to people and um, take this opportunity um, as, um, again, I keep going back to that, what Jack had said, if you know about the power of a generous heart, you will not let a single opportunity for giving uh, pass you by. Give of yourself. Give to people that need it. Give to people who are struggling. Tell them how you are able to come out. Tell them about this podcast that is able to help you to come out from where you're at so that they can be again to come to the place where you are and where you are able to give of yourself. Tell them about us meeting and um, communicating about the process of uh, the processes to self, um, you know, self growth. Uh, to the journey um, of self-growth and all these things, and so that uh, they would become strong, independent spirits, so that we can in turn turn around and become more generous to more people, so that we all can become healed and become uh, uh, strong and powerful in who we are. And you have to learn as you walk in a knowledge of uh, you know of who you are and what you are becoming. Uh, there's a certain power in that. And so I invite you all to come, uh, let your families and friends know about this podcast, Threads of Enlightenment, uh, A Journey into Personal Growth. Um, again, my name is Ken Primus. I am your host. I wrote this book with uh, uh, my co-author, Rade Chef. And... Um, they, uh, my name on the book is Shivanata Daddy, and this was given to me by a, um, I went to an ashram, uh, a few years ago in Sebastian. Majaya was, um, the guru there, and, uh, she called me Daddy for many, yeah, uh, for, for a long time, many years. And then, um, because I had, I was a single dad with my four boys. Here I have five boys, but I was living with four of them at the time that were living with me. And so she uh, called me daddy. And so uh, one day she pulled me aside and gave me the name Shivanata. And Shivanata means the teacher, teachers of God. And um, so they called me, I was known uh, as Shivanata daddy. And so um, uh, my hope is that you would take uh, the lessons that we are learning in uh, this particular podcast, Threads of Enlightenment, and apply them to your life. Tell your friends about us uh, so that they can listen. Tell your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters. Tell everyone so that we all can listen um, and grow to become um, the most beautiful human spirits possible on this planet and that we can become that shining light for everyone to see. I'll see you next time. Again, this is Ken Primus, the Res of Enlightenment. Have a great time and be safe in um, this current situation that is happening outside of our doors. You be safe and keep your family safe. Next time. Everyone who's listening to this podcast, 
We hope to continually help you to learn how to embrace moments of darkness because it is in the darkness that we learn how to develop and use our abilities to truly see those parts of ourselves often invisible to us in the light. It becomes your responsibility to navigate through all of your trials to find out who you truly are and begin your journey to loving yourself, which is possibly one of the most difficult things you will ever do in your life. To love yourself and to find the real you. But always remember to enjoy the journey. Thank you for coming by. Please subscribe. And if you can support us financially, we deeply appreciate it. You can do this by hitting the heart button. Until next time, invite your family, friends, neighbors, anyone that you can. You can hear us on Buzzsprout, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Overcast, and many more.